is a misconception out there that RVing is cheap. And I believe if you would ask any RVer, they will be quick to tell you that that is not the case. <laughs> In fact, how expensive RVing is going to be for you largely depends on how much RV maintenance and repair you're willing to take on yourself. So today, I'm going to take you through five very important maintenance tasks that you can do yourself. So before we get into our maintenance task, there's a few things I wanted to let you know. The first thing is why I'm doing this video or why I even started the channel in the first place. Well, the reason is because when I was thinking about RVing, I was so grateful to be able to watch YouTube and follow other families that were RVing. And also I got to learn about RVs themselves. And so when I was able to RV, I decided that whatever i could do if i had the opportunity i wanted to be able to share with other rvers and those who are fantasizing about rving to encourage them and to help them maybe make less mistakes along the way so that's the reason why i do this channel now having said that as i'm going through this video i will be mentioning the gadgets and the products that i am using and I'm doing that so that you can know exactly what I'm using, what works and what doesn't work. Now, none of the products or the gadgets that I mention in this video are sponsored, which means the manufacturers are not paying me to talk about their products. I am simply telling you the products that I bought with my own money that worked for me and hopefully they will work for you. I will provide a link in the description of this video if you decide you want to research or even purchase the product or the gadgets for yourself. But I would never tell you about any product that I am not using myself and that I find value in. So with that being said, let's get started. I already told you that these maintenance tasks are very important right so what I mean by that is if you do not do these you, your RVing experience is going to be very expensive because by neglecting to do these tasks you will be risking major repairs to your RV so the first thing I'm going to talk about is your house batteries now if you're new to RVing, you may not know that there's maintenance that needs to be done to your house batteries. You must make sure every month that you check for the water levels. Make sure that you're putting water inside your house battery. If the water level gets too low, I don't know the technical term for it, but it will cause your batteries to mess up. They will not reach full charge. And guess what? You're gonna be replacing your house batteries sooner than later. So the best thing to do is to take care of your house batteries. They also can, I've heard a story where the water level was very low in the batteries and they caught on fire. So it's not a good thing to neglect this. So having said that, I wanna show you this gadget. So this is the quick fill onboard battery watering system. Now, let me tell you the story on how I learned about this. We went, my husband and I, to a campground. We met a lovely couple at this campground who were full timers on their way up to Maine. And uh, as we spent a couple of evenings sitting outside, chit chatting with them, we started to learn some things about RVing. And one of the things the gentleman taught us was how to uh, a convenient way, I guess I should say, to water your batteries and make the task really simple and easy every time. And this is what he showed us. He had this gadget hooked up to his batteries and uh, it looks kind of strange. Of course, we were curious. I'm gonna take out the box because once he told me about it, I went online and ordered it. I will have a link in the description box should you want to research it yourself. So these, go on your battery 
where you add the water and then this is the hose that connects all of these so in essence instead of taking the lid off of your battery filling up each hole with water you essentially can fill each hole with water with one mechanism all at the same time so we're gonna try it in a few minutes now one more thing I need to show you you have to have this thing right here also this is also from quick fill and it is the squeeze bulb filler so this acts it pretty much acts as a pump you attach it to your fillers and then you use the bulb to pump the water and also another thing I need to say if you're new to RVing and you didn't know about the water, I know you don't know what type of water you need to use. You need to make sure that whenever you're putting water inside your battery, that you are using distilled water. That's very important. So guess what? We're gonna follow instructions and use distilled water. Now let's go ahead and get everything installed. So right here, I'm just taking a clean cloth and just wiping down the outside of my batteries to make sure there's no dirt or debris that can get inside as I install the watering system. So I'm having a little trouble here. It looks pretty simple on the packaging, but I'm trying to figure out how does each piece connect to the next one and then how does the first battery connect to the second battery? Well. As you can see here, your girl decided to read the directions and now we're getting this install on track. So there was a little bit of measuring and cutting involved to get everything connected, but once I got the watering system installed, then it was time to connect the pump. Now, why the pump was not sold with the watering system in the first place, it just seems to make sense to me, but hey, they didn't ask me. So what we did was replace the battery caps with these yellow valve manifolds and connected the manifolds with the water tubes. The red part is a stopper to keep the water from flowing out on that loose end there. Every other place is connected to a water hose. And then at the end, we've connected the bulb pump. And now we're putting the bulb pump into our distilled water jug and we're starting to pump the water into the batteries. I really like this guys. It makes it so much easier to water your batteries. It's very efficient and it's so much better than pouring water into those individual holes. You can tell when the batteries are full because your pump gets hard and won't pump any longer. And then once you're finished, you can just put your cap on and keep everything connected and just store it away until next time. And now let's move on to the generator. Seriously, the best thing you can do for your generator is to run it. Do not let it sit inoperable for long periods of time. Generators need to be ran. Having said that, after 150 hours of operations, you need to change your oil. So right here, my husband is releasing the old oil from the generator into a bottle so that he can properly dispose of it and we've purchased a new oil filter as well as an air filter and the recommended oil type from Cummings, the manufacturer of our generator. Here he's checking the oil levels to make sure he gets it just right. You don't want to add too much oil because that will cause your generator to shut down. So take your time, add oil little by little. Yes, and that's what you want to hear. I think 
most RVers get washing the exterior of the RV, even if it's just to make it look good. But really it's very important, especially to get up on top of the roof and keep it clean from debris and particles that may get inside your components housed up there like your air conditioner, your fans, and uh, maybe your satellite system or your solar panels. It's also a great opportunity for you to check out any cracks or things that need to be resealed on the top of your RV or around the sides. So keeping your RV clean on the outside can also prevent damage that could cost you in the long run. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about doing maintenance to your slides. And basically what you need to do is make sure that you add some lubricant to your rubber on the slides. You do not wanna add lubricant to this part right here. You would think you would need to since this is the part that's actually, um, I guess, mechanical going in and out and the track is right here. But you do not, don't ever, especially if you have slides like these that is made by Swintec, it is not recommended that you lube these because from what I was told, they can get so loose that your slide falls off track and out. So you don't wanna do that. Um, there is another type of slide, I think that has a mechanism up under the slide, like kind of in the middle of the slide up under there. And I think those are generally found on travel trailers. And I'm told those you do lube, but I would definitely check with your manufacturer. Do not take my advice because I am not a specialist at that. So I'm, really not a specialist at anything involving the RV. I'm just telling you what I do. So <laughs> here is what I'm using. I am using this product right here. It is a three and one RV slide. What does it say? RV slide out silicone. So this is it. It's not very expensive for $7 and 49 cents what I paid for it at my um, RV supply store. So all you simply do is just spray it on and wipe it down. So if you get just a little bit of spillage like I did on your track, just quickly take your rag and wipe it up. You wanna do both sides of your slide. Make sure that both rubber seals are good and lubricated. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and use the three-in-one window track lube and go ahead and lubricate my tracks on my window seals. I'm gonna lubricate the track for the glass pane as well as the screen. It is definitely the solution if you're having trouble opening and closing your RV windows. That, my friends, is a water hose that is coming through my RV window and attached to this toilet wand. It goes into the toilet, straight down into the black tank. At the end of this wand is a multi-directional sprayer that sprays water all around the sides of the black tank. It helps to remove anything that is stuck along the side walls of your black tank. Toilet paper and uh, you, you can pretty much imagine whatever else. So getting down deep in there with this wand allows you to clean all that gunk out. Flushing your tank with this wand also helps to maintain your sensors that are located along the side walls of your black tank. If you've ever checked your control panel and it says that your black tank is full or half full when you know you've already flushed it, it's most likely because there is junk stuck on the walls of your black tank. This wand will help you get all of that stuff in your black tank flushed out. Now once you flush your black tank out, you need to treat it. I'm going to be doing a twist on the GEO method. If you're not familiar with the GEO method, it became popular with RVers back in the 80s. And it calls for Calgon. Yes, the Calgon from the old school commercials. You know, Calgon, take me away. <laughs> I'm dating myself, I know. But anyway, it's the same product. And it also calls for Dawn dish detergent or a laundry detergent. But instead, I'm going to be using this Pine Glow. I cannot find Pine Sol in this COVID environment, so Pine Glow is going to have to do. And it doesn't matter what scents you purchase, the Calgon softens the water 
toilet paper and any other matter that's inside of the black tank and then the pine glow acts as a disinfectant and deodorizer I'm going to be adding four ounces of the Calgon to my gallon jug and then I'm also going to add 40 ounces of the pine glow then I'm going to fill the rest of my jug up with water now it's going to suds up quite a bit so just take your time go real slow and you can fill it up they say you only need to add four ounces which is about a half a cup for a black tank that's 30 to 50 gallons in size I have two bathrooms two black tanks one of them is a little over 30 gallons the other one is a little over 40 gallons so I'm going to be adding four ounces or half a cup to the 30 gallon tank and then I'm going to add eight ounces a full cup to my larger tank and that should keep my tanks smelling good and fresh if these tips have been helpful to you and you want more RV with Soul, check out these videos and remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching.